Then I'm also gonna add in half my milk. Oh, oh, shit. I'll clean that soon. This is nice. We should do this more often. Welcome to another episode of Snacks, and today's is interesting, frankly, because I do not have a plan. One of the questions I always get most frequently is like, where do my recipes come from? And today we're gonna walk through me developing a recipe. It's gonna be interesting. I have the base of what I want it to be. I bought this tart pan yesterday, and I was like, it's time for a springtime tart. But after that, no clue. Nothing behind, I mean, I have ingredients, but otherwise, nothing in this beautiful brain. So we're gonna go through it together because usually when I develop a recipe, I have to start with a certain starting point in mind and then I have other things that I like build off of that. So the starting point is usually, I'm thinking of like an event or a purpose that that recipe would be used for. Or I like to think of a recipe strictly in terms of like, how do I want it to look? Because like, that's a huge part of it too. So those are usually my two starting off points. I either have a vision of how I want something to look or I have like a vision or event that I want something to be served at. And that's where I jump off for these recipes. I'm thinking of a tart and I want it, like spring is here-ish. It's 42 degrees outside, but it's April, so conflicted. But I want this tart to be like green and springy but not too springy. So I'm starting with aesthetics, but I'm kind of building off of, I also want it to be like a lunchy, brunchy group recipe. Cause like, when else are you making a tart? Let's first start with the basics. I did keep the wrapping on so you guys know that like, I'm straight up starting with this for my brain. But obviously I'm gonna start with the tart crust, but here's the thing, I want the crust to be green. We're like at middle spring, like the good stuff doesn't come till May, but what's in season right now is dill. So I definitely want it to be like a dilly, herby, green, delicious crust. Now you've seen me make a pie crust on the channel before. First video in this like format, so go check it out. But this is gonna be a tart crust, which tends to be a little bit denser, less flake. So I'm gonna use my same standard pie crust recipe and then throw some herbs in it, pulse it to see if I can make like a green flower. I hope it doesn't come out to be like a chunky mess. It will be more moist. And then kind of do my standard pie crust method with that afterwards. 150 grams of flour, all purpose. And then I'm gonna say about 50 grams of dill, which would be one third of the volume of the flour. And I'm adding in the dill stems, which are also delicious and full of flavor. You could probably do this with any other kind of tender herb. I just really want this to be like high on the dill aspect so that it brings that level of flavor and we can kind of play off of it with the filling. I definitely know in my heart of hearts, the filling will be cheesy. But first let's pulse this together and see if we can even get a green flower. Okay. It's dilly, but it's not super green. And I anticipated this happening, which is why green surplus of materials. I'm feeling like 19 grams of parsley. This is like as close to gourmet makes Claire Saffitz I'm ever gonna get. I think like wing, I'm already stressed because like what if it doesn't work? It's gonna work. I, I'm, it's, it is going to work. We're manifesting it. <laughs> Smells good. Smells really, really good. Needs like a touch more green, but then I think once we add the butter, it'll turn into like the green that I'm looking for. The leaves have the most color. Maybe I should have done just leaves. Okay, I think I'm gonna do that. 10 grams of parsley. So taking off the stems cuts the parsley weight down by half. Giving them a quick dry before they go in. That's just to mitigate moisture content. I think I might retest the recipe off camera and uh, give you guys like actual metrics of just parsley leaves. And then you can use the stems for like a dressing or something fun. It is a super, super light green color right now, but I know that when I add moisture, when I add butter, it's gonna turn into like a slightly darker green that we want. Who knows what's gonna happen when we bake it. The reason I'm letting it sit is because kinetic energy has heated this flour up. So I don't wanna put it right into the pie crust process because then like my butter is not going to stay as cold as I want it to. Anyways, letting these cool down and now, getting out butter. This is only going to use 113 grams of butter. You have seen me make a pie crust before, so let's just cube our butter 
the way God intended. Keep it really cold. You've also heard me talk about hot hands before, which is something I struggle with. So I'm trying to touch this butter as little as possible. Working with butter right now is just making me want to make a scone. I could very much make a green scone. So this is also how recipe developing goes for me. It's just, just like my neurons are just firing, 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 and everything like starts in a certain process and you can pivot it so many different ways. Okay, so I'm actually gonna breeze through this process because I have made a pie crust on the channel before and that time I think I spent eight solid minutes talking about pie crust. If you need that, I'll link that below. But right now what I'm doing is just separating the butter into pieces, combining it with the flour, and then I'm gonna drizzle in about one fourth cup of ice water and then move it to a work surface. This is already coming together pretty easily, I think because of the moisture of the herbs like we talked about. So I'm gonna use like a quarter of the water that I would normally use, not even. And that'll pretty much bring it together to work surface texture. This is still crumbly, but it's got a lot of moisture to it. So I am probably gonna add just a little bit of flour to the surface. We're in the winging it section of this operation. So I kinda wanna coat both sides, but what we're still gonna do is what I think is like imperative with making any crust. Let's cut into thirds, boom, boom, press. And look like you can catch that lamination there. You can see the chunks of butter. We didn't like overwork it. And just because it's a tart dough doesn't mean we don't want those like flaky crust aspects of a pie dough. Okay, that's four, I think. So from that point, I'm now gonna shape it into a circle so that when we roll it out into the tart dough, it won't be too difficult to handle. It's very green, which is the whole goal. So it's about one inch tall, maybe more. And I'm just gonna turn it into like a little disc. Give it a quick roll out. Okay, we need to chill this for like 30 minutes. And while we do that, we can process through the filling and the toppings and the execution. We can process. This whole episode feels very intimate. I know what vegetables I want. I do not know <laughs> what else I want in the interior. Should we do a store fridge tour? Just come, let's do a fridge tour. This is, this is horrifying. This is the, just nobody prepared for this. I am also kind of excited to show you though because I feel like this is the realest food tour you're gonna get on YouTube or at least like the realest fridge tour. Anyways, welcome. Um, a lot is going on here. So we have all the condiments, my preserved lemons, my gochujang, my miso is back there, my coconut milk, and all my olives, as well as not one, but two jars of sun-dried tomatoes and fig butter, obviously, along with vegan cream cheese, three other types of vegan cream cheese, and a not vegan cream cheese. I'm not gonna explain that to you. The Kerrygold section, along with my yeast, Eric's chicken thighs, my chicken eggs, half a loaf of sourdough, along with a full loaf of sourdough proofing in the background. All our Icelandic skier. And then these are, this is, well, this is what we just made. Eric sandwich. I know, we're talking. <laughs> and then these are all vegetables, but back there's my tofu and my salmon. It's the protein corner. I told you it was gonna be cheesy. My cheese options are Kerrygold Dubliner cheddar, which doesn't feel springy. And then I have ricotta and feta that I got from Trader Joe's. And I think together these might be it. I feel good about ricotta and feta because feta is like an acidic cheese. So they can like play off each other. Like ricotta is pretty like mild. Eggs, ooh. So, especially with ricotta or any kind of cheese tart mixture, I personally err on the side of using eggs because the eggs co coagulate it and essentially help it keep like a lot of structure. So we're gonna use eggs. And then I told you I'd already decided the vegetables that I wanted. I am gonna be using a decent amount of spinach. Close to a chiffonade, but really just chopped. Spinach just shrinks down really well. So it still gives you that green. It still makes you feel that like this whole entire cheese mixture is somewhat healthy. I do want a little bit of dill in the tart. I think that would go really nice with the feta. I feel like we're gonna have like some Spanakopita style energy going. I think that's gonna be everything for the tart filling. I'm probably gonna add some spices, but the spices I add will depend on the topping. So let's talk it out. We can go two ways now. 
I bought broccolini, which is like pretty springy, pretty seasonal, like broccoli is very much an April veg. Um, but I also bought Kamado, which is those brown tomatoes. These are like really cool looking, and I feel like those mixed with like coriander, cumin, red pepper flakes, and harissa like tossed and then layered on top of this particular cheese mixture would be really good. But in that case, I'd add lemon zest and garlic to the cheese. But if I was doing the broccolini topping, I'd probably add nutmeg and garlic to the cheese and then just top it with blanched broccolini. And the broccolini keeps it green. And if we're going for aesthetics, then I should probably go broccolini. Let's mix everything together first, get it chilling, shape the tart, and then we can talk about it more. <laughs> Mixing with a spatula because with a whisk I'd kind of be beating the eggs and that would be beating in a lot of like rise to the eggs I'd be adding in air and then that would create a dome to the tart where we just want like a flat like somewhat coagulated cheese mixture eggs man you learn something new every day with them and I think we came to a conclusion in that little break of me adding eggs to this I think it's gonna be a broccolini tart and we can save the tomatoey one for summer Okay, I'm adding in half the spinach right now, then I'm also gonna add in half my milk. Oh, oh, shit. I'll clean that. My gut is telling me stop at six tablespoons of milk and stop at like this level of spinach. This is looking pretty goopy, but in a good way. And I think it'll set really nicely in the tart. I am now going to just add one clove of garlic, grate in some lemon zest, add some nutmeg, salt and pepper to taste. And then we'll let this chill in the fridge while we form the tart dough. Slice that broccolini topping, and I think we're done. Little lemon zesting tip, hack, Thing that I personally did not know. You want to get just the zest on the outside. Anything further in is the pith. It's really bitter. There's no flavor. Um, you don't want that. So that's why I was turning as I was zesting. I wanted a decent amount of zest, but I didn't want to get too close to the white stuff that you don't really want. Okay, so it has been about 30 minutes of resting time for our dough. So I'm going to flour surface. I washed our tart pan. It's navy blue, which I think matches my aesthetic. In a perfect world, I'd want you to like make this in the morning, shape it three hours later, just because in pastry, we love cold butter. We live and breathe by cold butter. In this winging it episode, we're in a little bit of a pinch. So 30 minutes is just fine. I would not do it with less than 30 minutes rest time though. I can already see my huge flakes of butter, which I'm very happy with. Okay, this looks like a pretty good consistency. I'm using a pretty liberal amount of flour. I'd rather have more flour binding in the butter. So this fits really nicely over the tart pan. I'm going to smoosh it up to the sides and then press it down to make sure I'm getting all the edges. This is going to be rustic. Rustic uh, on this channel means homey, which means not professionally done. Welcome, we're incredibly rustic here. So now we're gonna chill this for 30 minutes or at least as long as it takes for the oven to preheat and then we'll assemble everything. Broccolini time. And a part of me is glad that we're doing this because broccolini is like so springy. The tart is gonna be in the oven for like 40 minutes, I think. So I was like, the broccolini will definitely cook in that time. And what we can do is just toss it in a little bit of lemon juice a smidge, 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 smidge of olive oil and then salt. So for the broccolini to be all cute, I'm gonna slice it down the center, keeping the stems really nice and really long. See now it's more like movie, so I can like layer it on the tart the way I want. I added a little coriander to this, 
which I think is actually going to be really nice with like the coriander, nutmeggy, feta-y ricotta. It's just going to, it all feels really nice and I kind of like that we're riffing on this recipe as I go. But in 15 minutes our oven will be ready and then we'll assemble everything for the tart. Tart dough has been chilling, filling has been chilling. I'm just going to put this in. Let's take our little broccoli guys and make it a vibe. I think broccolini was the move because like in my head when I had a vision, this was the vision. Like super springy, super green. It's gonna be so delicious. We now bake for I do not know how long. I'm gonna start with 20 minutes and then start checking it. I really hope this turns out because like it's so pretty right now. I just send good energy. Remember how I said 20 minutes? We are now at 50 which is fine, that is standard for tarts, especially fruit tarts. They usually are like loaves and they need a lot of long, tender love and care to bake. I was assuming that since it was eggs, they would bake a little bit faster, but I'd rather the recipe get done correctly than get done quickly. So I'm gonna keep the temperature low and slow for the final recipe. I think it, it worked to our advantage. So like we predicted, the greenness of the crust did not stay super green, but it got like a really nice, like light kind of textured color. I'm gonna add lemon zest and a little bit more coriander to the top of this to give it some extra texture. We'll let it cool and then we have we have tart. Tart tip, if you can touch it with bare hands then it's ready but before then it might not be solid enough. Ho ho ho, there we go. We stick the landing, we drop the tart. Oh my god, it's so cheesy. I was nervous. I was telling Alex right before we shot this clip, I was like, it might not be totally set. It's set, but it's like ricotta-y, feta-y, cheesy and wonderful in the middle. It's kind of like a, what you get in the middle layer of lasagna, only you have a whole tart of it. And there's also like all that dill, all that coriander, all that nutmeg and like broccolini. I love how I'm hyping it up and I haven't even tried it yet. Fork acquired, cause I'm a fucking lady. Should I bleep that? Should we start bleeping the channel? Comment below. It's rich for sure, but it does taste like spring. And I feel like in winging this recipe, all I wanted was to come out of it with like something comforting and homey that does taste like spring. Like you need every element. You need the nutmeg, you need the coriander, you definitely need the lemon. And the feta and ricotta are just like best friends. And the crust is pretty good. I'm gonna make sure to have everything written below with times, temperatures, and measurements that I know work. This is definitely just a first test, but I'm kind of glad that we did the first test together. And I had a lot of fun. Let me know if you wanna do more of these. From now on, all of my YouTube videos are going to be YouTube exclusive recipes, which means that you won't see them on my Instagram or TikTok. So I'm really excited to bring you guys like new content. So of course, like, subscribe if you're into that. I hope you make this recipe and I hope to see you in the next video.